Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome back to From the Depths, building a complete ship start to finish. So last time we made this uh, rather fun cram cannon back here. It's uh, looking at it, it's not my usual brand of turret cap, but you know, we're just gonna roll with it for now. Because uh, the thing with building a complete ship is that you're almost certainly gonna be changing things later. So we're gonna just roll with this for now, we're gonna move on to the front of the ship. And the thing that probably uh, a lot of people have been waiting for, uh, the Advanced Cannon. The APS, Advanced Projectile System. So, like I said before, this thing's gonna be at the front, so um, uh, the thing, the APS can fire forward, uh, because APS is good at long range, or at least can be, generally is. And uh, so when we're closing on a target, the long range weapons can just uh, really lay into the enemy. And, uh, yeah. And we're gonna go with... What am I gonna go with? I'm looking at my... Looking at my notes here. Didn't say anything about the kind of shell, which is a little bit of an oversight. But we're probably gonna go for, like, AP HE, AP Frag, something like that. Um, fuseless penetrators, because that's really convenient. So, first off, we need to go into this compartment here. And this is, as I said before, 13 meters across. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, so that's a 13 by 13 turret. Shift delete. Get rid of blocks. Shift delete, shift delete. I'm going to pull up my uh, save prefabs. It's very. If you find yourself doing things over and over again, this is just super handy. And here we have our little uh, prefab. And I believe. Just double checking over here on the cram cannon. Yes, it looks like. It looks like. Yeah, so the turret neck is going to be uh, three meters tall, which is kind of throwing me for a loop because usually I do two meters tall, but you know what? That's uh, just how we're going to do this. And this is going to be pretty much the same size as the cram turret. And I am going to redo. I might just run over and prefab. Uh, Nah, I won't do that, because APS and cram turrets tend to be a little bit different, I find. Uh, just because different, um, the different way that, um, uh, crams and... Whoopsie daisy, something's not right here. Hello. Oh, that's... Okay, that is a metal slope. Gotcha. Alright, so, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so APS and uh, crams tend to connect... Uh, in somewhat different dimensions, so that tends to be how these things are different. So let's just lock that in there, like so, so we can tell where things are. And now the fun bit, uh, the APS Tetris. So APS Tetris is can be fantastically complicated uh, until you find something that just works well and uh, works for you. So we're going to be using three clip, clip Tetris, and I have made a video on that. And um, there is a more material efficient 4-clip Tetris, or if you really want to go insane, 5-clip Tetris. Uh, but it's only marginally more material efficient, so we're not going to do that. We're going to stick with 3-clip Tetris. And so that's going to start back here. We're going to go, let's calculate. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that means it's a 4-meter loader because... We're gonna go... No, actually it's a 3 meter loader. It's 3 meters because we're going to do cunning things with ejectors. So, I am... I used to be quite cynical about um, ammo ejectors. Now, I'm a huge fan of them. They are really, really good. And um, if you want your APS to not destroy your entire turret when it gets blown up, I highly recommend using them. So, we got an auto loader and 3 clips, so that means for inputs, and we're just going to put a little recoil absorber right here, and then it's all going to connect at the top in something that I in pre that uh, I like to call overgrowth, and I pretty much only use overgrowth rather than undergrowth uh, these days. And so here we've got our little prefab, and we're just going to prefab this and s put it all over the place, like so. And we could be really clever and like stack multiple loaders on top of each other and all that jazz. We're not going to do that. And so now we flip it like that. Oh no, we can't. We flip it like that. Whoopsie daisy, almost forgot how this Tetris worked. And you'll notice that these, these uh, little columns 
that is absolutely fine. We're going to fit uh, coolers and recoil absorbers and all the lovely things that APS needs. I'm going to do that. It would also have been prudent to design the shell first. So uh, this method of building is like hull first, then you jam stuff into it, which can work just fine, but also can uh, really backfire. Uh, but you can also like it is really a good idea uh, some a lot of the time to uh, design the weapons first and then design the the ship around them so yeah and one thing i must absolutely not forget is uh let's see here there we go that's what we want that's what we want okay good 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 and I tend to find that we need a lot of recall absorption uh, for this kind of setup. So, right, so in the middle here, this is going to, let's see, let's see. Let us delete that, see how much we got. Let's see how much we got. We could do two clip Tetris in the front here. I'm going to hold off on that. And we need to do a little bit of math here because uh, I tend to you do uh, three barrel turrets. Oh no, oh dear. Oh dear, this one was not put in there properly. This will not do. There we go, now that's the correct height. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, sorry. Uh, 15 plus 8 is 21, so roughly 7 uh, each, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2 on the extra here, so we're going to use 5 con way connectors because that's really convenient, like so, and this guy's going to be like so, and then these guys are going to be like so, So, da, 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 da. We can get cute here already. Stuff like this. Just quickly check whether these are all connected the way I want them to. So, one, two, let's just check this is all connected. It appears to be connected the way I want, which is good, which is excellent, which is what we like. It's what we like. Alright, so now we're going to go here. And incidentally, it's good to color code these things. I didn't really have to this time, but uh, I think we are going to do that just to be on the safe side so we don't get confused because these things are not allowed to connect. Otherwise, that messes everything up. So this top layer here, connected like so. And it is a risk to, like, uh, vanish blocks and... Um, start working like this but also um it helps see what you're doing so that is blocked that's a slope there so what i'm gonna do here is just let's make that red actually and we can go one two three four and then there's a recall absorber right there and that can go there and that can go there and same thing there could have prefab that didn't have to and now more of these here that's very convenient and what's over here there's a gap here so it's got three so then we're gonna have four over here and we can do clever things with connections here so things don't touch And that's colored, I just realized. No worries. It's okay. There we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Which means we can do an extra tube down here. And let's color that just to be safe. Just to be safe. Like so. might have to take this thing and slap it on a different fortress and we're gonna go here color code this is quite handy to keep in mind 
And we're actually going to do something like this because we need another one. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Just Tetris, Tetris. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Jolly good. So six divided by three is four. So that means four there. Four there. Yes. Excellent. All right. So now we need to even this up. One, two, three, four, five, six. I am going to try and make these things as even as possible, but that might not happen. So you get six, and then you get three, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, uh, do four there, three there, and we should be. See, you have two extra back here means that you guys get uh, two extra over here, and that should be fine and dandy. And if not, we can swap things around a little bit, like so. And let us save that. Where is it? 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 There we go. So let's see how that looks. We have APS bits in there. And this could also very easily be made a railgun. I say very easily, I'm not in the habit of making railguns, annoyingly enough, so... Uh, some people hate that, uh, that I don't do that. And they've got a point, because railguns done properly are amazing. Right there, 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 and then... So see what I mean? This is already uh, gonna look like a different shape than this cram turret back here. Which is one of the reasons why... Uh, just swapping out cram cannons for APS or vice versa uh, on a ship is actually easier said than done because they work differently, they're shaped differently, they're effective at different sizes, so to speak, and effective for different things at different sizes. So that can be somewhat inconvenient. So before I go too far, actually, I am just going to plug uh, all this. I'm going to plug this hole, like so. And should do that, and also should do that, there, there. Like I've said before, you don't strictly have to armor your turrets like this. I'm just, it's a habit uh, for me by now, and I get paranoid when I don't do it. Uh, but yeah, alright, let's finish off the neck, uh, which looks something like this. This is going to be something like that. And Let's just do this, it's not going to be an award-winning neck, and these slopes are not strictly necessary, but I like them. Let's just check for a second. Um, that rotates, but will it rotate uh, when I do this? It's always handy to check these things ahead of time, because if you uh, try and do that Aha! See? That's not working out so well. Right, let's uh, do this instead. I actually believe this is exactly how I did the cram turret, so you gotta wonder how I forgot that. Beams, beams, beams. Beams are lovely. There we go. Whee! It rotates like a dream. And like I said before, you can replace this, um, you can replace these with actual um, beam beams, and that actually makes the same result, because it's just to do with how hitboxes are calculated. I'm not going to do that, because it looks funny. Um, this is where aesthetics uh, bumps up against uh, practicality, and even though you're not going to see this, just knowing it's there uh, makes a bit of a difference. So, alright, we can get rid of these. Whoop. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's save the game again. And now, let's think about... Let's think about, I'm not filling in that uh, turret neck right yet, because you can do cunning things with recoil absorbers and cooling and stuff like that in the turret neck itself. If you have to, I don't recommend it. Best to keep all your expensive squishy bits uh, where they're less likely to be shot at. So we're going to do that, and we need to figure out 
what works at a three meter gauge. So here we go, and we can create a new shell design from here. So we've got this. Uh, let's go here. So we go three meter clip, 150 millimeter. That gauge is a bit small. Let's go back to 12. And what do we got? 250 millimeters. Let's do that. Um, let's actually shrink that a little bit. If we go to 10, what does that do? That does 300 millimeters. I like that. Let's do that. So let's have a look here. This is already a decent enough shell. I think I'm going to make this a super cav uh, shell because that's good. That's a bit much by the looks of it. Uh, hmm. Uh, doing half damage to metal is that's actually okay um, because that actually helps uh, to prevent overpenning. So, hmm, I think I do like this. We could make this... Oh, wait, no. We need to... Let's do this. And we're going to swap out that. If you're going to use uh, ejectors and chemical warheads, you do need this. Known as the ejection defuse. So, what do we got here? For a 3 meter clip. Alright, so that looks lovely. And that explosive damage isn't too much. Uh, but it will do. This will do nicely. Uh, this is not going to be an award-winning APS, but um, let's see how we do. And we've assigned it. That possibly was a bit too early, because now we need to... Let's see. Is it... Ooh, interesting. This does actually have more autoloaders. That's the opposite of what usually happens. That's alright. Alright, so let's go here. We want this to be 250mm, so let's make it double barrel. So, one, two, three, four, and 500mm, two barrels, and that is actually pretty good. That's what we want. Now, same thing over here. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four, and two barrels, two barrels, max accuracy, of course. And let's go here. So those numbers are actually doing just fine. We appear to be sinking. This thing has buoyancy issues that I think I am absolutely going to have to fix, and I have ideas on how to do that. Um, the main problem, of course, is this uh, heavy armor uh, citadel right here, uh, which is not ideal. I might actually replace that uh, with something else. In fact, I have ideas on how to uh, deal with this. Uh, this thing might need up props, though, so let's go here. Wow, I'm doing this much faster than I thought. All that APS practice has paid off. So this is an interesting thing. It's... hmm... Yep, no, this is great. So, we got that. I'm actually going to uh, test this off this thing, because this thing currently doesn't float very well. Unfortunately, that is um, a problem with um, certain craft. Uh, should I do that now? Nah, I won't do that. Alright, so let's edit this. I'm going to literally take a screenshot of this shell, so I get it right. Exactly. Thank you, snipper clips. Snipping tool goes over here. Now, we're going to finish off the turret cap and then slap it on a fortress to test fire it. So, here we're going to do some extra slopage. Some extra sexy slopage. I'm going to do that. And. Hmm. We don't really have the room for this, do we? We don't really have the room for this. Let's do. This is not ideal slopage. But it does create enough of an air gap here to do that. Maybe I should use pulse, or maybe I should do something that's not stupid. Okay, let's just chuck some surge protectors in there for fun. So if the turret cap gets hit, uh, this intercepts EMP surges before it gets all the way down to the bottom. And we're just going to make it solid back here, like so. And like so. And just like uh, the Gram turret over there, we're going to do this. We're going to make this like so, like so, like so. Nothing fancy, nothing incredibly fancy. Just going to look something like this. And we 
we're going to, what are we going to do? We're going to go back here. We're going to uh, have a little bit of detection hidden in the back. I need a rangefinder. I actually the other day uh, did a whoopsie on one of these things and uh, had it pointing down. Uh, don't do that. That's silly. And uh, let's see here. Do I want this? Yes, I do. Problem with nine meters like this is, yeah, I don't actually, right, let's do this instead. So we go here, wireless receiver. Going to have a camera over here. We're going to have a camera tracker over here. I'm going to make this thing a little bit wider so we can do this. It's actually going to be a bigger turret than the cram turret, I just realized. It's also going to look kind of different. Not sure if I like that, but uh, surely it'll be fine. Right, let's put some wedges in here. This is something I should have done probably with the other turret. Uh, alas, I did not. So let's go here, metal portholes, hiding them cameras. Jolly, jolly, jolly good. Jolly, jolly good. And also, the thing I'm going to do is do this. Don't strip the need to do it on the camera side, but on the tracker side this thing needs to look up, so I just tend to do this to keep things symmetrical. Not ideal, but it makes things easy. I do like easy because I'm a lazy, lazy boy. Lazy, I say. So there we have the beginnings of a turret, of a Tourette's. You know what I'm gonna do actually is something like this, just to be cute. Just going to put a heavy armor. No, we're not going to put a heavy armor. We're going to just stick with metal. When in doubt, metal, just like music tastes. All right. So, I'm going to do this now. Just seal that off internally. And we're going to stick a layer over here. That is kind of bigger, I just realized. Okay, so now let's chuck this off the back. We have a box. Right, so I have no idea what the back here is going to be filled with. Um, it's often not a good idea to leave this completely empty, I should mention, uh, because um, Hesh loves air gaps and will go through them if it can. So what I'm actually gonna do here is fill this with wood, uh, just as a just as a space filler, so it doesn't make a huge problem. All right, so that is a tremendously ug ugly turret. This will not do. Let's lengthen this a little bit, like so. Uh, by the way, you don't need to do that. That's actually, that's making that those double barrels is actually kind of a good idea. Uh, let's go, how should we do this now? Let's do it like... I do like barrel guards. Barrel guards make me very happy, so we're gonna use them like so. There we go. I haven't actually, I yeah, I am not doing this the same way uh, I did that cram tower, that's for sure. Alright, let's go here, and we're gonna need to do this, and we're gonna have a little bit of glass here. We're gonna have a wedge, delicious wedges, and we're gonna go here, and a delicious grass thing again. Grass. I'm gonna put grass on my turret cap. So, glass is not ideal armor, in case people were wondering, but it is better than nothing. Considerably better than nothing. It's actually reasonably tough these days. So, let's go here. Wedge, delicious wedges. And we have options here, so I am going to put one more layer on the sides here. This turret cap is very big and meaty. And I almost guarantee you that it's going to ruin the buoyancy of this. Right, let's do this. Whoops, wrong color. 
Wrong color indeed. Right, so we do need slopes on top. That's important. And also, one thing I like to do, because uh, AA mantlets tend to be somewhat tall, I just put a heavy armor beam just on top of them, just to help them uh, survive without going completely nuts on the armor layer. So there we go. Not my usual circular turret design. That's okay. That is a okay. We're actually floating for once. Just depends on whether a wave gets us, I guess. All right. So back here, let's just finish this off. Like so. I could have stuck wood on back here, it doesn't matter. Um, let's make, let's prettify this. Transition slopes are fantastic. Let's just do this quickly. Two meters of metal generally does the trick for turret caps. Let's see how thick the armor is on the front. That's pretty thick. Again, not award winning turret design, but it will do. Also, since we're going heavy, 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 uh, let's have a look at the center of mass of this turret. Where is it? Oh, well, it's quite it's quite tall actually, which is and a little bit forward, which means there is going to be tiltage. Uh, but that's okay. Let's just replace this with heavy barrels. So heavy barrels, just go one, two, three. Let's see here. Do we want that? Yes, we do. Three and then the end. Let's see, accuracy is that. 1000 meters per second, lovely, lovely. Alrighty then. Also, we need to. Right, so there's one, this is gonna be two. Weapon group two. Oh, the glass turned invisible. Who would have thunk? So this is two. Wait, no, we need to set the fire rate, so that's. 37. It's exactly the same as this guy over here. And this is exactly the same here. 32.4. So it spits out uh, 90 shells a minute, this full turret. But we go here, and that's that. Let's see. I just want to quickly check. Did I set firing restrictions on this? I did. I'm a clever lad. Let's do that here. Uh, before we forget, and that's actually something I should have done uh, while I was copy-pasting uh, around the place. So let's go here, go there. I'm just going to set it to, to my usual default, which is 60 degrees. 60 degrees, like so. And 60 degrees, like so. Beautiful, and we have achieved an APS turret. Yeah, it looks better. I think it looks better than the cram turret, but uh, I might be biased. So, and we are barely floating. Uh, once we uh, mess with the hull a little bit, this thing should float pretty okay. And I'm not convinced this armor is enough, funnily enough. Hmm. It's a, flo it's a floaty thing, but not quite floaty enough. Alright, so let's actually see this turret in action because I like blowing things up and I know for a fact that you lot also like that so nice big turret cap I tend to default to that simply because and that's purely because uh, I've hidden detection systems and stuff in there so that is the reason for that let's do this and let us do that and let us spawn in our test fortress and shoot a marauder because that's fun uh, let's go here. Fortresses, test fortresses. Always good to have a test fortress for testing things. And we're going to go here, and we're going to hop over here. Interesting. What's happened here? Why? Oh, that's what's happened here. Oh, well. Oh, well, doesn't matter. It does not matter. It does not matter to me. Um, that probably does matter, actually. Uh, some people might have been screaming at me about that. Alright, uh, let's... Ooh, let's edit this. 
So we got 12. 12 shells. 3 meter clip. So super cavitation base. I always have a... I just accidentally saved... Um, saved a thing on here. What's it? Okay, so super cavitation base. Good, good, good. And let us reload. Maybe it has shells. Did that actually get loaded? Let's see, is that loading correctly? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Me likey. Alright, let's test fire this thing. Rotty ho then. That is a gun. Let's just save this here. Uh, actually, I don't need to. I don't need to do that. So, let us now sport in something fun to shoot at. Spawn in... Yeah, Marauder. And are we making a mess? Oh, yeah. Since this thing is a super cavitation uh, gun, that means we can target blocks below the waterline. And against the Marauder, it makes a lovely mess. And AI dead. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's test against something more substantial. Uh, get rid of you. Let's test against an Alcazar. Because an Alcazar has lambs and better armor. And this seems to be doing... Absolutely grand, actually. See, that's the problem with shells like this, is that uh, they're not lambs-proof, and... Yep, that seems to have done the trick quite nicely. Now, we could get really cute and make it AP heat and uh, other groovy stuff like that, but I think I'm going to just roll with this for now. Like I said, this is not the best uh, advanced cannon in the world, but uh, seems to be doing alright. Seems to do the trick. So yeah, that'll do for, for this uh, episode. And um, we probably are going to make things more pretty as we go on. And, um, and might even add some extra stuff on there. So, uh, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps. And there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters. And I will see you next time in From the Depths. Building a complete ship from scratch. Farewell.